ask um, John Murphy, I don't know whether you have any views about the safety culture. I think um, Lorraine's spoken really, really interestingly about that, but also just in terms of the actions in Vision Zero that relate to buses, there's stuff around fatigue management, there's stuff around bus safety, and there's stuff about the health and well-being of bus drivers. Um, what's your experience of these programmes and that are designed to prevent fatigue mostly, and are they working, and should anything else be done? For me, I, I, I'm reluctant to say the work done so far by TfL around fatigue management has gone very much further forward than when we first started. I think there's a, an overall failing to recognise that you can't solve everything by, uh, by putting a machine into a bus. Um, some of the measures TfL have taken in between the Loughborough report and up to this point include things like CNI machines where you can see if a driver's fatigued. The problem with that is it's reactive. We need to get to a stage where we're being proactive. So the flaw with the TfL thinking from, certainly from the union's perception, I'm sure I speak quite accurately and say the drivers are with breakfast as well, the, the, the people we're representing. The problem with TfL, and it was demonstrated in, in their recent, um, they ran a course for all of London while you're talking about training, where people were given virtual reality headsets to put on. And the solution to fatigue from the TfL perspective, according to this training, is don't have an argument with your family at night and make sure you go to bed early. And, and it completely ignores the fact that we make drivers work longer. We're about to, or, or there's TfL have a plan to roll out remote sign-on, uh, which is going to make drivers even more fatigued. So, and, and again, if you go to remote sign-on, the measures that have been put in place up to now, training managers to recognise uh, people who are fatigued, well, how does that work when someone's signing on five miles away from the manager? I don't see that working unless they have bionic eyes. So, uh, bionic eyesight, sorry. So I, I think obviously, fund, uh, and I keep banging on about it, and, and I know a lot of people will think it's that lefty thing again. Funding is an issue because at this moment in time, as we reduce funding as we go forward, this has to have an impact. If you go to the shop with less money, you buy less stuff. I think everyone can accept that. In this instance, if we want to talk about a decent standard of training going forward rather than something that's drawn on the back of a fag packet, then we have to pay for that and we have to invest into that. If we want to talk about putting all these measures in going forward, we have to pay for that. So the, the funding is critically important. Um, the training itself, how do you train someone not to be tired? Um, so this this is the failing in the approach. You have to put measures in place to stop people being tired. And um, look, if, if we talk about the training of the standard of bus drivers, well, let me tell you this. In 24 years of bus driving, the vast majority of the people that I have worked with, I have met, have been of the highest standard who take the job really, really serious. And I think that was never, ever better demonstrated than during the pandemic and the first lockdown. While everyone who could took shelter, bus drivers had to come to work every single day and play Russian roulette. And, and let that be a, 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 a symbol of, of the dedication, the pro professionalism of these people. As Lorraine says, they're trained to high standards. By and large, when you think of the miles they do, the amount of incidents that they're involved with are, are, are quite small in proportion to other road users out there. So it's not necessarily about the training. They can do the job, but sometimes there will be mistakes. And these mistakes are increased when you include things like fatigue and uh, the impacts of the measures that increase fatigue, such as remote sign-on, such as longer duties, such as lower pay, such as, such as, such as. So it's a broader picture than just training. But if you're asking me, is a training around Vision Zero up to scratch? Absolutely not. Um, and who's responsible ultimately for this is the bus operators, the people who operate the contracts from TfL run the buses in London. The reason is perhaps not as high on their agenda is because perhaps it's not seen as something that's high on the agenda because there's other things that take priority, like banging out miles, chasing miles, making sure that they, they maximise the uh, margins that are available to them. So it falls lower down the scale. Money always rules, doesn't it? Um, I hope that's answered what you said, Caroline. I've, uh, Ellie, otherwise I've just talked for like 10 minutes for no good reason. No, that's really helpful. Thank you. Back to you, Chair. Cheers. That was lovely. Thank you, John. Um, 